Welcome to the Kentucky Game Plan with your hosts, Adrian and Mac. Welcome, everyone, to the Kentucky Game Plan. Hello, hello, hello. I am Mac Black. I'm Adrian Smith. How's everyone doing? Hopefully well. You're staying safe, keeping the hands washed and yep. sanitized. That's right. Hand, hand, sanitized from head to toe. Um, it looks like we may be opening businesses soon. It's possible. Well, not we as us, but no. uh, the governor has put a plan together with every other governor, I guess, in the United States of America, and coming up with a um, plan to open, reopen the country, but it's going to be in phases. Sure. So you got your construction, blah, 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 blah. Um, what was it, May? First, first, and yeah. then the 11th, you have your retail. Correct. And then the 20th, those of you guys who need your hair cut and your ladies who need your hair and your nails done, we'll have the mm-hmm. salons open and other businesses that's that's in the same category as that. So, looks like we're on track to, I'm not going to say getting back to normal. Like I said before, it's not going to be the whole norm thing. Right. But um, people are going back to work. Personally, I think they should wait just a little bit longer to about June. That's why I would say the end of June probably the really the, the safest bet. But, but, I mean, you know, I'm not in control, so. Well, neither one of us are. But I am in control to say that we do have a special guest later on. That we do. Charles Midland Jr., the uh, new transfer. Out of San Francisco. Out of San Francisco, headed to Louisville. Yeah. So he's going to join us on the show. Dude brings a lot of energy. He's going to bring a lot of positive energy to the team, too. So, Agreed. you guys are... On and off the court. Yeah. I mean, Little yeah. fans be in for a treat this, is, this season. Yeah. I mean, this guy, like you said, he brings it 24-7 uh, on the floor, in the locker room, and hopefully in the interviews. So, yeah. yeah. His whole approach to basketball is awesome. So Yep. Totally agree. Uh, so, UK is obviously in the transfer portal situation also bringing exactly. in guys because not everybody's going to be going back to the same schools it seems no. like because some schools might be shutting down programs as right. far as you know the athletic departments so yeah uk uh is going to have hopefully a new transfer by the name of nike Sambade, a new transfer uh from miami of ohio what if his name is pronounced nikki that'd be really weird or it's spelled just like nike yeah it is <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we're trying to cover all bases. It, we're trying. All right. Yeah, he's a transfer from Miami of Ohio, six uh, four shooting guard, averaged fourteen points and six rebounds a game. Uh, he has three years of experience at Miami of Ohio in the MAC conference. In the MAC tournament, he averaged sixteen points and five rebounds. So hopefully, this guy's an experienced guy that can come in. They're gonna they're gonna need help. some people to fill the roster because. Everybody left once again, so it's it's like it's becoming a trend right. at the University of Kentucky. Um, well, this guy also has some experience. You got all those guys coming in, the, the Askews and the Bostons and all right. those. This guy has three years of college experience. You so, know, so. Some leadership right. is what they're going to need. Right. Uh, another young team slash, say, a veteran or more somebody more experienced. Sure. So that this is like, what, the third year for that? Yes. So hopefully they can they come up with a formula that works with the talent and the experience they got coming in. So just like Charles, who's yeah, been on the show exactly. later, he's got that experience. Exactly, three years. So and the energy, energy as well. Right. Because sometimes you got the energy from the young guys, which they're young, inexperienced. They they got they're athletic, talented, but you still need the mind and the guidance of somebody who's a veteran. Well, not only that, but some guys, leader. like you said, the younger guys, they have all that, you know, energy in the beginning of the season. But yeah. once you get past Christmas, you know, the energy kind of dies down, and these veteran guys come in, and they, they know right. the schedule. They know the work ethic already of how to prepare well, know, yourself for the, a long season. Right, they know the whole flow of it. Right. From beginning to end, which they need that. Uh, another recruiting, well, they're after this this big man bad in the recruiting process. UK. Yes, Kentucky. Uh, Frank Anasellum. Anis- Anis- I can't say his name. Please forgive me. Sure. That's, that's the best I can get at it. But 
Uh, he's a big man, 6'10", 220 pounds, out of Atlanta, Georgia. He's ranked 85th nationally, four-star, 2020 class. And he's got a lot of offers, but Kentucky being one of them. Uh, Kansas is on the table, Oregon, Tennessee, Auburn, Arizona, mm. Alabama, LSU, Maryland, Florida, Arkansas, and Georgia, of course. Wow. So a lot of people are trying to get this guy, and Kentucky's going to need a big man. Yeah, they, they're they losing two. Yeah, so they're going to need him to – they're going to need him in there, and then, like you said, one of these transfers for uh, leadership. Right. Big man presence, and, to, and then – you know, of the whole, the whole all-around package of all you the know, young stars coming in too. Exactly. Right. So you got your athleticism, your leadership, experience. Mm-hmm. You know, talent. You got to put all that together. Yeah, you got to mold it. It's like man. a puzzle. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. Put it together so you can puzzle. Make that big picture. I agree. So, um, wish all of them the best of luck. Definitely. Yeah. I'm excited to see what they're going to do. Uh, UofL basketball also reaching out, trying to get some transfers to come in. We already know L. Ellis, point guard, is coming in. Yeah. Uh, Charles Mellon Jr. is coming in. Um, uh, there's another guy, another point guard. Um, mine's slipping me. Um, I can't think of it. Um, but anyway, they also got another guy coming in. Uh, Macabre Etney is 6'11 center, who's 59th ranked player overall of the class of 2021. Okay. But they're trying to get him to reclass for 2022. So they're trying to get a big man also to fill the roles that they need on their roster. And they've lost several people as well. Yeah, I agree. So um, another well, UofL situation. Um, this tragic. is tragic situation. Um, Dexter Rents, a wide receiver from Oki High School down in Orlando, Florida. Uh, he was killed this past Saturday. Um, he was committed to UofL for next season coming in. Um, fortunately, he was killed uh, Saturday night, shot and killed. Three others were also shot. Uh, they're still in the hospital. Um, Shaquille O'Neal, former NBA star, yeah. Papa John's representative, uh, he is going to pay for the whole funeral expense for this family. Um, so That's some gratitude, definitely. Yeah, it's pretty awesome that you know Shaq reaching out and doing that. So then he have to do it. No, he did not. He did not. So, so what was this... Uh, what was the reasoning behind all that? Just, other than being, other than stupidity on the other side of things, not not with him, but the shooter, right? The shooter, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, it's just wrong place, wrong time. He was just, just had happened to be where somebody did not like somebody, and he was an innocent bystander. Terrible. So whole life ahead of him. Eighteen years old. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, his whole life ahead of him. I agree. Um, U of L is helping fighting the coronavirus. University of Louisville has developed a robot. It's called the Arna. A R N A. It's an adaptive robot nursing assistant. It's like an artificial intelligence. System. Yeah. Um, it basically goes into rooms um, and cleans everything, sprays everything, wipes down everything from the ceiling to the floor. It's like a sanitation bot. Right. With a ultraviolet light, high powered ultraviolet light that goes across the room and also helps kill anything off that right. they didn't get with, with the wipe down. But they're also going to be using this robot going forward to help with the nursing. So the nurses okay. don't have to go in the room so much to that check on patients. That definitely some of the pressure off of them because they're going through it right now. Right. So they operate this by basically a tablet Okay. so they can see and do everything they need to do so with the tablet. So can Siri operate to control this? Uh, I don't okay, think Siri so, but it would be the... really, really weird if it did. Yeah. <laughs> Siri does a lot of stuff right now that's weird, so... Well, yeah, that going forward, yes. Siri and Bixby. I have Bixby. Oh, do you? Yeah, you show Bixby too. You got a Samsung phone. And um, Engineer over there has a iPhone connection with uh, Siri. Siri. Yeah. Uh, This robot is going to cost a million dollars. Each robot will be over a million dollars. And how many are they going to have? They're starting off with two. Man, two million dollars. All right. Hopefully, these things uh, work to precision. Yeah, I'm and accurate and do what they're supposed to do because yep. that's a lot of money. Yeah, well, a lot of money. But what's money these days, right? When we're all Money's, locked away. Money's, uh, I'm gonna say it's everything at the moment because yeah. some people don't have it. The unemployment situation is out of control as well. Yeah, uh, it's like what three was it? Thirty million people have applied. Yes, that's crazy. Yeah, I would never imagine that. 
Well, nobody saw this coming, let's be honest. I think some people seen it coming, but we're not going there. Right. Let's leave that where it is. <laughs> but yeah, um Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna leave that as it is, folks. Right. Um let's go ahead and get uh Charles on the phone. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's hit yeah, him up. Let's jump into this. Yeah, let's do it. Hello? Hello, Charles. Yeah, how's it going? Hey, what's going on? Can you hear us okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you okay. Okay, great, great. Yeah, we want to welcome you, welcome you to the show, man. We're excited to have you on. Excited to be here. Who, who is this I'm speaking to right now? Uh, I'm Mike Black. and I'm Adrian Smith. Very cool, very cool. Now, Charles, um, you're a transfer from San Francisco, uh, who is now committed to UofL. Um, at San Francisco, you average 14 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists. Uh, you were the WCC All Conference second team in 2019, and part of the WCC All Freshman team in 2017. Pretty, pretty um, impressive stats there. Yeah. Um, first question, starting off, man. Uh, like I said, I'm glad to have you on. I'm glad that you're uh, going to be part of the uh, Louisville Cardinals basketball team this season. And what influenced you to transfer to Louisville? And what do you feel like will be your biggest contribution to the team and Coach Mack's system of play? Um, yeah, uh, great question. Uh, I think one of the biggest draws for me uh, with the, op- the option to go to Louisville when they called was uh, I knew that it was they weren't just calling just to call. Uh, the fact that I already had my list and they, they still felt like they had a good enough offer to call me when I had a list of schools. That was a really, really good list of schools out uh made me feel more confident in what they thought about me how they felt about me and uh the fact that there was just a there was a fit there for me and that there was a need that i could come in and and provide and uh, have an opportunity to if i if i do the things i know i'm capable of doing so uh also just i think the things that i can provide for the system is just um one my mentality the way that i play and i approach practice and games every single day uh and i think just my my aggressiveness offensively. Uh, I think I'm somebody who's really, really good at getting to the basket, scoring the ball, and uh, getting to the line, and just putting pressure on other defenses. And uh, I think I'm somebody who makes uh, his teammates better. In terms of, it doesn't have to be getting the assist, but letting other guys go, and getting them confidence, and helping them uh, feel like they can do, you know, whatever they need to help us win too. Uh, I think those are the things that I can, I can bring. Awesome, awesome. Um, I, I definitely agree with you uh, as far as the energy, like watching some of your footage. I can see yeah. that you're um, an aggressive player, great scorer, shooter, all around. Um, and having a teammate like that to bring that type of energy to a team and then step in and kind of be a leader, uh, that makes yeah. all the difference, definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a pretty passionate player, and I think you guys are going to see a lot of that this year, so I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've watched some of your film, too, and it seems like um, the flow of your game, even on the defensive side of the ball, uh-huh. it's you help create turnovers, and that's and that's, and that's a key on defense. It's not just sure. making the team shoot a bad shot. It's help uh-huh. creating turnovers, and that's what you do. Yeah, I think it's just really important. Uh, we were a lot faster as a team this past year when I was at USF, and I think a lot of that was just my defense took a huge, huge jump from the year before. And uh, – I felt like I was just reading things a lot better. I was, I was seeing things, anticipating things before they were happening. And uh, that's something I think is still a little underrated in my game. And I, I think I'm, I'm still getting better. I watch them almost every day. So I'm trying to, you know, learn as much as I can, grab as much as I can. But uh, that that creates easy offense. So when uh, whenever teams are playing really great defensively, uh, it makes the offense even that much better. And uh, Coach Mack was telling us he wants us to get into the top 30, top 25 defensively next year. I think we were top 30 this past year. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, yeah, that would be a huge, huge jump. That would just make everything flow so much easier, and I think we'll, we'll be a better team because of that too. Or oh, you're off. You're off to the right track. <laughs> yeah, just start. So now, during your freshman season at San Francisco, uh, you got right. a chance to sit down and meet and talk with Bill Cartwright, uh, the right. former Chicago Bull, and obviously former San Francisco Don. Um, yeah. He talked about learn how to play smart basketball. To you, what is smart basketball? Uh, that's a good question. I think a lot of that is knowing who you are as a player, what you can do, and uh, how you can help the team be the best team they can be. I think it's just understanding 
what you bring and what your value is to, to a team uh, and just seeing just because you can do a lot of things which things can you do that helps the team that does doing one thing help the team better than not doing something else or basically how can you compliment the other guys I think that's one of the biggest things about being a smart basketball player and playing smart basketball definitely yeah definitely agree with that part for sure all right Charles um you definitely show a lot of passion for the game love for the game um, when did you first realize your love for basketball? And were there any people in your family, any, any family members that were athletes that might influence you to, to uh, play basketball? Oh, for sure. Uh, my uh, my dad, first and foremost, my dad was a really, really great basketball player. He played at St. John's, and uh, he ended up going overseas for a while. And I always played just because I saw him playing, and he was like a hero to me, so I wanted to be like him. Nice. But I think... When I got a little bit older, it was, I think it was my eighth grade year was when I took a huge, like there was just a level of dedication that just elevated to a completely different different level. And I started approaching the game a lot differently. And uh, I started seeing results a lot faster than I expected to. So it was fun. Oh, definitely. It's always good to have somebody look up to. A lot of people have, you know, other players. Other people have people, right. members in the family or both. So... Um, next question, this upcoming season, what team or teams are you looking forward to playing and having an impact on? Um, man, uh, basically every team in the conference. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I like crazy. that. Uh, get them all. All of them are, they're in the backyard. They're right, they're right on the corner. It doesn't take that long to get to these schools. But, uh, they knew who I was. I went to their camps when I was in high school. So, it's, uh, it's not like it's. I'm a foreigner to them, right. so it'll be a lot of fun, you know, going back into those gyms Make an and impact uh, playing early. against those teams. I'm sure North Carolina and Duke is at the top of the list, right? Oh, they're definitely up there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I got a lot of people that are fans of those schools, so I want to, I want to make them a little, uh, a little upset after you play them. There you go. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you will. I'm telling you, man, you got a lot of energy, and I'm, I'm excited. Definitely. So am I. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, Kobe was your favorite player. Yeah. Uh, what do you take from Kobe on and off the court? Um, man, yeah, a lot, a lot. Uh, him and I, we have a lot of similarities in terms of the way that we, we both grew up. Uh, uh, both of our dads played professionally overseas, and uh, we grew up, a lot of our childhood was overseas, and uh, having to come back to the States when you're older and not fitting in culturally or understanding, you know, just the – the social cues of like what things are like in regular school versus being homeschooled or living in a different country for so long. Um, those were things that kind of made me connect with him personally. Uh, just like we both really gravitated to basketball and that was like our thing. That was like our, our sense of relief or that our output to kind of express, express ourselves because it was difficult to do it in other ways. But just the way that he played the game, I mean, his work ethic, mm. Is like unlike anything I've ever seen. Oh yeah, and, definitely. Uh, I think, I think I don't think he's underrated in this aspect, but I just love how intelligent he is as a person, and uh, how he would just problem solve his way through things that he didn't know how to do. And I think that's something that I learned a lot from him. Just uh, there were I, I was never a perfect basketball player. I've always had weaknesses, and just like figuring out how to work through those weaknesses and make those things my strengths, I think has been something that's made me really proud of myself and the progress I've made since I've been in college and uh because I get better every single year and people can talk about age or whatever but if you're getting better every year I don't think that there's much that you can say so I mean that's one thing I want to do next year too so he's been a huge influence for me I can see that you got that uh mama mentality definitely for sure and I think a lot of people have um adopted that whole uh philosophy and principle of getting better mm-hmm. and every day you're getting better every year you're getting better and you strive yeah. just to be great and to make others around you great and that's a great mindset to have especially in the game of basketball and in life in general so right right yeah, definitely. um will you miss playing on the west coast and if so um do you think there'll be any adjustments that you have to make playing into playing in the um acc conference um well i miss playing the west. there's some games that 
I I remember really really well that some of my favorite games, some gyms that are really fun to play in, uh-huh. uh, did not get to be Gonzaga. Uh, so that sorry. was one thing that was very very salty taste in my mouth. Uh, if we by some chance randomly get a chance to play against them again, um, I don't think I'll be saying that anymore. But uh, <laughs> that's one thing I'm probably gonna miss just the just that aspect. But in terms of adjusting to the game. Uh, we played against a pretty good competition, but it just wasn't as as frequent. I think it'll be a little different. Obviously, you want to approach every game the same, but it's a little different when every game you know is sold out, every game's on national TV, uh, every game you're playing against some of the best teams in the country, some of the best athletes in the country. It uh it definitely uh does something in terms of your approach. Because my approach, I approach like every week before we play certain teams based off of personnel how I'm going to be in certain spots and stuff like that. Right. When you have, you're going against more athletic guys more often and stuff, you have to, you get to fine tune certain aspects of your game that applies more frequently throughout the, throughout the season. So I think that's one thing that I'm really looking forward to, but it, it'll probably be a, maybe a little bit of an adjustment process, but I don't think it's going to be too much. Yeah. I mean, you're playing some, some not only top notch talent, but yeah, the, but the coaches, they're also top notch right. talent. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Are you, um, I know with all the whole uh, coronavirus thing going on right now, are you in Louisville now or are you still out west? Oh, no. I, so I'm in, uh, I'm in North Carolina. Okay. I literally flew out right before San Francisco shut down because I knew it was going to get bad. And they already canceled school. So yeah. I was talking to my parents and they, okay. they, they thought it would be best for me to do that. So I've been here for about a month now, a little bit over a month. So it's been cool. Are you getting to uh, work out any, or like uh, get in yeah. like as uh, they play outdoors or in maybe a gym by yourself? I'm not. I know they got the whole strict uh, social distancing thing going on. So right. No, gyms are gyms are hard to come by, but we have a hoop outside. So okay. Kind of glad I made the move. Uh, we got some equipment out here, so I've been using that and uh, just trying to find some cardio any way that I can, working on my ball handling, things like that. Oh, definitely, definitely. So for Charles, what is the next chapter in life after U of L? Uh, the goal is to go to the league. If I can, that'd be awesome. I mean, I put my name in this past, uh, after the season was over. Mm-hmm. I didn't, like, make an announcement or anything. But uh, with the whole virus, it was kind of tough to get workouts and stuff, so I figured it'd probably just be best to uh, come back to college because my name wasn't really high on, on draft boards. It was there, but it wasn't. It didn't look as promising as I would have hoped. So sure. uh, just coming back, you know, working on those things, fine-tuning my game and uh, – Showing people that I can do it against uh, even more consistent high level competition, I think, is one thing that's really, really important for me. And uh, winning some games, too. I mean, I haven't got to the tournament or anything. But after, I'm still going to play. But just, it's just a matter of where and, and when kind of thing. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Going to put that name in the hat. Good right. to know. <laughs> yeah. But again, man, I want to I wanna welcome you to Louisville. I know you're not here yet, but. I'm going to give you the welcome to Louisville because uh, I think you're going to do great things here. And the fans are yeah. definitely going to love you. Yeah, so trust you're, me. You're going to love playing at the Yum Center and the energy inside that place is crazy. So you're going to love that. And I think it's just going to fuel your game even more, the fans. So. Yeah, it's been the outpour has been crazy already. And I haven't even played a game yet, so I can't even imagine <laughs> when, the, when the lights come on what it's going to be like. So I'm I'm – so excited. I can't stop talking about it. I tell everybody about it all the time. So I can't wait, honestly. It's been great. You're going to love it. You're going to yeah. love it. We're, de- we're going to try to get out there and catch a couple games, but we don't see on TV. So yeah, we're sure. definitely going to be watching, man. Yeah, I have a couple friends that are former players at UofL, and they're, they're pretty excited about you, man. So just to give you a heads up, even the former guys oh, yeah. are pretty hyped. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I think we got a lot of potential. I mean, even last year, this was a great team, and they yeah. – it's kind of upsetting because no one got to see what they were going to do in March, but exactly. I think they could have done something crazy. So hopefully we can just build on that and uh, add to that this, this season. So Oh, yeah, keep the, the momentum goal. going. Well, Charles, I appreciate the time, brother. Um, we'll reach out to you again soon, hopefully. Yeah, I appreciate you guys calling. Yeah, definitely. Um, good luck next season, and we will be out there checking some games out and hopefully meeting you face-to-face. All right, great. And appreciate thank you. Thank you, sir, and uh, thank you for coming on to the Kentucky Game Plan Podcast, and uh, good luck with everything. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you. All right. Have a good day. Take care. Same to you. All right. Bye. Bye.
you know, I was pretty impressed with the interview. I was too. Um, Okay, like, excitement, just pure energy. Well, like you said, he, he brings it. His on approach, the court his and approach off the court. to the game. He's got that mama mentality, definitely. Yeah, he does. And you know me, me being a Kobe fan. Not to say that you're not, but well, you're a way bigger Kobe fan just, than I would ever be. Hey, but I, I love to see um, his positive attitude and just just ready. You, oh yeah. You can hear it in his voice. He's just ready to get on that yeah, floor. Yeah, he's, he's itching to get, get in there floor. and. Make his impact on the game in college basketball. Not that he hasn't already, but to do it in the ACC conference and to do it as a Louisville Cardinal. Right. So, um, Cardinal fans, you all have definitely have something special coming this season. Get out there, support him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely support him. Support um, the whole team. But this guy here, you guys are in for a treat, definitely. Um, And I think he's going to bring it in the locker room, too. That's, yeah. that's one thing that yeah. this team, I think, kind of needs. Minus Coach Mack doing his thing, right. which is – that's what he does. But, like you said, experience, there you go. To have that extra influence, there's nothing wrong with that. I totally agree. So, you guys, um, make sure you hit that like button when you're watching the show. Please share. Or please listen sh- to the show. And please share. And share. Follow us as well on Instagram at the underscore KY underscore game plan. We're also on Facebook at the KY dot game plan. And you can also hit us up on Twitter at the KY Game Plan. And with that being said, and wrapping up the show, my name is Mac Black. I am Adrian Smith. And thank you all for tuning into the Kentucky Game Plan.